I have an amazing word from God for you guys. I am back from my maternity leave and so excited to share what God put on my heart. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Alyssa and I'm here to be your friend and help you grow in your relationship with God through Jesus. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel, comment below, share it with a friend, and let's dive in. I really believe this video is gonna challenge your faith no matter if you're a new believer or if you're more mature to the faith or if you're currently just seeking and trying to figure out if God even exists. I believe that God is going to speak through this video, so get ready. Have any of you guys ever thirsted for something? Like you really, really, really wanted something to drink. Like your throat was parched and you were dehydrated and you'd do anything just to have a glass of cold water. Well. Maybe you felt like that before. I know I feel like that living in the desert, living in Phoenix, Arizona. But I think that in a lot of ways, a lot of us are thirsty for other things. Some of us are thirsty for a spouse. Like we really, really, really want God to give us that husband or that wife. Some of us are thirsty for a job or a career or a platform. And we're just like, man, if I could just get in that position, then life will be great. Maybe my paycheck will increase. Maybe we're thirsty for finances because we're tired of being broke <laughs> and we just need to put food on our table to feed our kids. I don't know what it is that you're thirsting for, but I do know the one who has the answer. We are going to look at John chapter four and study the story about Jesus and the Samaritan woman. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Holy Spirit, have your way. Open up the hearts for people to receive this message. Speak truth to them, Lord, and use me in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing them and making more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please, give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, Give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gizerim where our ancestors worshiped? Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. Well, we Jews know all about him for salvation comes through the Jews, but the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. The father is looking for those who will worship him that way for God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, 
I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. So we're going to really dig into this story and see what the Lord has to say to us. I want to start in verse four. It says that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Now, I've heard it preached by other people that technically to get to Galilee, which is where he was going, he didn't need to go through Samaria. He just had to, meaning like he had a purpose. He had an intention. He had a reason for going to Samaria. But technically, geographically, it was kind of out of the way. So he had to, he had a reason, he had a purpose, he had a mission to go to Samaria. When he got there, it says that Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. What stood out to me this morning when I was studying is Jesus was tired, right? Because he was the son of God, fully God and fully man, but he got weary. He was tired. And that's a word to some of you that you can be tired, but that tiredness should not stop you from ministry. Because I woke up tired this morning, y'all, but the Lord told me to record this video. So here I'm recording. Okay. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Hmm. I wonder if this is the reason why Jesus had to go to Samaria. Said the Samaritan woman came and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. Now this Samaritan, she came to the well, not to get water for other people, but probably to get water for her and her household. But yet here's this man asking her to give him some of her water that she's working really hard for to get. This Samaritan woman came to get water for herself, but God was asking her to serve him. Okay. Jesus was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. For some of you, in order to do ministry, to minister to the, the people or the person that God has called you to do, you're going to be in a season of alone. You're going to be away from other people, even away from other disciples of Jesus, even away from other Christians or brothers and sisters in the faith. There's a time and a place for fellowship with the saints. And then there's a time and a place to be alone with God. And sometimes you have to break away from those religious people in order to reach the Samaritan because Jesus' disciples were Jewish. And back in the day, Jewish people did not associate with Samaritans. They especially didn't talk to women, which we're going to read about. Um, Because her response is basically the woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. So his Jewish disciples probably would have been like questioning things, you know, just not wanting him to talk to this woman. But Jesus had come to Samaria for this very purpose and this very reason, because again, he's God and he's all knowing. So again, sometimes God calls you to be by yourself to do the work that he has for you. And you can't do it surrounded by certain people even Christians. So the woman was surprised again for Jews have any ha, refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. And she said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. So why are you asking me for a drink? And I love this because she thought she knew who she was talking to. She thought she knew, you know, just by judging him by his outward appearance, she had him, okay, you're a Jewish man. You shouldn't be talking to me. And she thought she knew who he was. And another thing is she thought she knew who she was. She's identifying herself. She's like, I'm a Samaritan woman. This is my position. This is my identity. It's a Samaritan woman. And so because of who you are and because of who I am, why are you even speaking to me? She was surprised that God, that this man was asking her to do something. And have you ever been surprised by God calling you to do something? Maybe you're sensing that God is asking you to do something for him. And you're like, me? Do you know who I am? I am fill in the blank. I'm a daughter of an alcoholic or I was raised in poverty or I don't have a college degree. I'm only a high school graduate. Are you making excuses for your identity and not stepping into what God is calling you to do for him? And so she asks him a question, why? What's the purpose? Why are you asking me for a drink? And I love Jesus's reply. There's so much in this reply. Jesus said, if you only knew, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to. So there are two things that she needed to know. She needed to know the gift that God had for her and who she was speaking to. Then he says, you would have asked me and I would give you living water. So let's look at the two things that she needed to know to get this living water. Okay. First, she needed to know the gift of God. 
the gift that God had for her specifically. And what is this gift of God? For those of my Bible scholars, you probably know the answer. For those of you maybe newer to the faith or learning, you're like, what is the gift of God? Well, Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. The gift of God is eternal life. And what does eternal life mean? That's a big question, right? So she doesn't know the gift that God has for her. Do you know the gift that God has for you? Do you know what eternal life means? Well, one, it means that life isn't just here and now, that there's more to come in the future, that there's life after death, which Jesus Jesus proved because when he died on the cross, he rose three days later, proving that there's life after death, that there's more to come than this world that we live in now, which is good for us who feel stuck in our circumstances, who feel stuck in the position that we've been given. The Samaritan woman might've felt stuck um, at, into, into who she was or who she thought she was into her identity. But God is saying to her, no, there's more to this life than the life that you're living now. And there's eternal life that I can offer you for later. But in addition to that, Jesus also came in John 10 and says that I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So I truly believe that the abundant life starts here and it starts now. It starts the day that we're born again and we receive eternal life. And if you read in, I'm going to read you guys Psalm 103, The Bible talked about forget not all his benefits, right? So we're going to read some of the benefits that come from knowing God. Let all that I am praise the Lord, starting in verse two. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercy. He fills my life with good things and my youth is renewed like the eagles. So Jesus came and he showed us what the eternal life looks like. It looks like healing. It looks like joy. It looks like freedom. It looks like dancing. It looks like love and compassion and mercy and kindness and gentleness. It looks like Jesus. So this woman doesn't know the gift. She doesn't know the gift of eternal life. And not only that, but but Jesus is saying, and this is the gift that God has for her. And again, I think it's just so specific because he's talking directly to this woman. Um, and God has a specific plan for her life, just, has he ha- just like he has a specific plan for your life. And he says, and who you are speaking to. She had no idea that she was talking to the son of God. She had no idea that she was talking to the one through whom the gift comes. Because again, in Romans 6, 23, it says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. She's talking to the one who has come to help give her this gift, this gift of life and love and, and, and satisfaction, this gift of joy, this gift of what she's longing for. He said, if you knew those two things that you would ask me, and I love how he shifts. He shifts from saying, if you knew who you're speaking to, you would ask me. He makes it personal. Like you can come and talk to me. You can ask me directly. Jesus, who was God in the flesh, is standing before this woman and saying, ask me talk to me. He's face to face with her. There's no more temple. There's no more religious duties that that she needs to do in order to get into the presence of God. He's standing right in front of her and said, if you knew the gift of God and the one who you're speaking to, you would ask me, you would come to me and ask me. And then he says, and I would give you, I would give you, I would give it to you. I would give you living water. And that face-to-face relationship reminds me of Genesis and how Adam and Eve were walking in the garden, how they were face-to-face with God and how God sent Jesus to restore us back into that right relationship with him. But this is what her reply is. She says, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, so you ain't got nothing to get this water with. <laughs> this well is very deep. So where would you get this living water? So I, you can tell that she really doesn't believe him because she's like, okay, you say you got it, but how are you going to get it? What, what do you have to do to get this gift? Because again, we said, oh, I didn't even go back to that. If you knew the gift God has for you, a gift is free. The definition of a gift is something that you do not have to pay for, Right. She's still trying to pay for it. She's still trying to work for it. She's telling him, you don't have a rope or a bucket. The well is deep. How are you going to get this water? What what work are you going to do to get this water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? 
How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? And so what I really got is this. Again, she's in the mindset of how are you going to get this thing? What work are you going to do to get this thing? And not only that, but who do you think you are? Do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob? So I see this as just as just religion, right? Like a lot of us think we have to work to get this gift of eternal life, that we have to work to, to get to God. And Jesus was standing right in front of her saying, just ask me. And then the other part is, how can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Because again, back in that day, women were viewed as less than animals sometimes. So she's saying even him and his sons and his animals enjoyed this water, but eh, I'm a woman. You know, what What are you doing? What are you, what are you even talking about? She had the wrong view of who she was. Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done or what you're doing. If you drink the water of the world, you drink the regular things that you're chasing after to fill your thirst, you're going to thirst again. But Jesus says, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. The difference in the water is the giver. The difference is the fact that Jesus is the one who's giving this water. Because who is Jesus? Well, we'll figure it out. He said that it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Again, this gift of eternal life is in this living water. And what I researched about spring water that I found out that's different than water in a well is that spring water is the purest form of water that you can possibly have. It hasn't been contaminated by the pollutants of the world because it comes from deep, deep down in the earth. So it's literally the purest form of water, the best type of water you can drink. You get all the most natural minerals. It has alkaline in it, which combats the acidity in our own bodies. And so Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you the freshest, purest, most amazing, living, eternal water. And it's going to be a spring within you. And that's the key too, is it's gonna, it's not gonna come from outside. It's not gonna be something you have to work to get. You don't have to work to walk this long distance, dig down into this deep well, pull up this water to drink, drink it just to be thirsty again. You don't have to work to get this water. You just have to ask and I'll give you water that springs up. It, it's, it's from within and it satisfies you and it gives you eternal life. But the woman, I really don't think she believed Jesus at all because her reply is, please, sir. The woman said, give me this water. <laughs> then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. And scholars, and if, you, if you're a Christian and you've heard the story preached before, a lot of scholars say the reason this woman came at noontime to get water was so she could be alone because noontime is the hottest time of day. It is not the time of day most women went to get water. They normally went to get water in the early morning or in the evening when the sun was low, so it would be cooler. But she went in the middle of the day kind of saying that she didn't want to be seen. And we'll find out why, because which we'll read um, as to why this woman kind of had this dark history, this dark past as to why she didn't want to be around other women. And she was basically saying, yeah, I don't, if I don't have to come here to get water, sure, give me this water because I don't want to come here. Okay. So why doesn't she want to come there? Jesus says, go and get your husband. Jesus told her, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man that you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. So here it is. Here's why this woman doesn't want to come to the well. This might even be why the woman kind of thinks lowly of herself and is like, why are you talking to me? Because she's had not one, not two, not three, not four, but five husbands. A lot of y'all just want one husband, okay? But this woman had five husbands and she still was thirsty. She still hadn't found eternal life. She still was longing for something more that Jesus was willing to give her. Even though the woman was sarcastic and kind of responded with unbelief, Jesus met her where he was. And he, out of his love, I really believe, showed her who he was. He proved himself to her, right? Because she didn't believe him. So he was like, all right, I'm gonna prove, I'm gonna prove to you that I am who I say that I am. So he gives her this prophetic word. She says, sir, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gezerim where our answers to worship? So now she's thinking, okay, I know you're a Jew, but not only are you a Jew, you must be a prophet. And remember the two prerequisites 
for Jesus in order for her to get this gift is one, she must know the gift of God. And then two, she must know the one who's giving it to her. So she still doesn't know who he is. She's now perceiving him to be a prophet. But Jesus was so much more than a prophet. So then Jesus shifts and says, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming. Well, it will no longer matter whether you worship the father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. So the place that you go doesn't matter. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews because salvation comes through Jesus and who was a Jew. But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. The father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And I love that he's saying the father is looking for those who are going to worship him that way. Just like how Jesus came looking specifically for this Samaritan woman. And maybe you felt Jesus looking for you, calling you to worship him in spirit and in truth, calling you to stop being religious and trying to work for eternal life and instead just come to him and ask him who will give it to you. The woman said, I know So this is what she does know, all right? She didn't know none of the other stuff, but she does know this. She says, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. So the woman did have some faith that's unveiled through this story, that she actually did believe in the coming Messiah, the coming Christ. Messiah means the chosen one. She believed in in the Old Testament. She believed in the Jewish Bible at the time. She believed that God was going to send this Messiah, this anointed one who was going to come and restore the kingdom of heaven. She believed that. And she said, when he comes, he's going to explain everything to us. It's kind of like she kind of just had that inner faith. Like, I know that when he does come, he's going to explain things. He's going to make it right. And I truly believe that Jesus saw her faith, that the father saw her faith, which is one of the reasons why he appeared to her, because faith is how we move God. And it's funny that she says that he'll explain everything to us, because here Jesus was basically explaining everything to her. And so then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back and they were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask him, what do you want with her or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. And I love the fact that she dropped her bucket. She stopped trying. And it said she went and told everyone that she knew, come and see this man. Like, did she now believe because of after all that, right, that he was the Messiah? She, she needed to know the gift of God, eternal life, but also the one who was going to give it to her. She needed to know who, who she was talking to. So Jesus revealed himself to her and said, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. So now after all this, she knows the Messiah. She knows Jesus because he appeared to her face to face. She knows the one who told her all that she ever did and came and loved her anyways, came and spoke to her anyways. He saw her past. He saw how she went through the five husbands. He saw everything that she ever did and yet and still found her worthy enough to approach her. I really relate to the Samaritan woman. I know what it feels like to just want to be loved, you know, want to be accepted. Um, I had a bad reputation in college, just like the Samaritan woman did. And through that, Jesus showed me that you will never be satisfied unless you come to me. That well is not going to fill you. You're going to thirst again, but come to me and I'll give you living water. And so I feel like there's some of you watching this who are longing again for a spouse or a job or, or whatever. You're longing for something deep and you're thirsty. And I believe that Jesus is saying, if you knew the gift of God and the one who asked you, you would have asked him. And he would have given you living water. So I want us, want us to come together and ask God for, for living water. But before I do that, right, there's another part to this story that I want to dive into um, that people don't normally talk about, but I feel like it's really, really, really important. So after the woman went into the village and told all the people to come and see the Messiah, um, it says the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food that you know nothing about. 
Did he, did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants and another harvest. And it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work and now you will get to gather the harvest. So what I believe Jesus is saying here is that his food, well, what he did say is his food is to do the will of God. His food was to reach the Samaritan woman, was to do ministry. And whatever it is that God has called you to do, whatever purpose that he's given you to live out here on his, this earth, when you do that thing, you will be fed in, in ways that, again, that people will, won't even be able to understand. They'll know nothing about. God was saying to his disciples, lift up your eyes and see. So the first, the Samaritan woman couldn't see who he was, but now he's talking to the disciples and he's like, you guys know who I am, but do you see what I've called you to do? The harvest is ripe. And the harvest he was talking about was the people. And what I love about this, you guys, is as we do the will of God, Jesus says, what joy awaits. There's joy to be found. I'm talking to you mature believers in the faith who have been walking with God for some time and you're missing joy in your life. Are you doing the will of God? Are you going out? Are you making disciples? Are you helping to, to reap the harvest? So I'm speaking to those disciples of Jesus. Go out. Find your Samaritan woman, make disciples, and there you will find joy that you've never experienced before. And I love how they say, and we now know, we know that this is the savior of the world. Because it goes back to the question he asked the Samaritan woman. If you knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, if you only knew, do you know Jesus? Do you know the one who came to give you eternal life? If not, you can come to him today. You can ask him into your heart and into your life. And I want to help you to do that. So let's just bow our heads and pray. Father God, I pray for everyone watching this, Lord, that they can know you. That they can know the one true God. That we can know Jesus who came to give us eternal life. I pray for the disciples of Jesus who already know you, Lord God, that they can open up their eyes to see that the harvest is plentiful. You're, and you said later that, that the laborers are few. And so God, I ask that you send forth harvesters. I ask God that you open up their eyes to see the people right in front of them, their coworkers, their neighbors, God, people at the grocery store, Lord, whoever's right in front of them who needs to know Jesus, I pray that you open up their eyes and that you give them the courage and the faith to reach out and to bring them to Jesus so they can know you as well. And that way their joy can be made complete. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So I hope this message encouraged you to know that you are not too far from God, that no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through, again, think about the Samaritan woman who had five different husbands. But yet God still went out. He had to go to Samaria to find her, to share with her that he was the Messiah, that he was the chosen one, that Jesus is the one who came into the world to take away our sins and put us in right relationship with God, that Jesus came to heal us from every sickness and disease, that Jesus came to heal our broken hearts, that Jesus came to take away our pain and wipe every tear from our eye, that Jesus came to give us beauty from, from ashes, that Jesus came to bring God's kingdom from heaven here on earth. And if you want to know this Jesus today and the gift that he has for you, the calling and the purpose that he has for your life, because he has a special plan for your life, all you have to do is ask him. You don't need me to ask him. You can go into your room, shut the door, go into your car, take a moment at work, even in the bathroom stall, and just ask Jesus to come into your life and tell him that you want to know him and you want to know the gift of eternal life. And I believe he will reveal himself to you. The Samaritan woman had no idea when she first started talking to Jesus that God was going to use her the way that he did. At first she said, who are you to talk to this Samaritan woman? But now she is the <laughs> Samaritan woman of the Bible, the one that we read stories about today. And that she was the one who God used to bring her entire village to Jesus. 
How does God want to use you today? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a big like. Subscribe to the channel. I'm your friend, Alyssa, your girl here to just help you continue to grow in your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Leave a comment below if this video blessed you and please share it with a friend. Share it on social media. You never know who's thirsty, who's longing for something, who's looking for something, and what they're really looking for is Jesus Christ. So I hope this video blessed you. And again, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.